Hey guys, Kev here, and I want to do two first impressions. Uh, these are knives that I've shown before on the channel, but they're just different versions of them. So let's start with this one first. This is the Demco Knives AD 20.5. And this, of course, is the Shark's Foot version of this knife. Aus 10A, Taiwan. Decent edge, but they're thick behind the edge. I'll definitely get um, my buddy Joe to put an edge on this. I did take this apart already. I got it this morning. Um, there's There was some play. I basically got it all out. Um, and I still was able to keep the action pretty good. I really want to get skiff bearings for this. I have them for my clip point, which, uh, cool news. I just sent my clip point version off to River's Edge Cutlery. And they are going to, that one has Arctic fat carbon scales. So what they're going to do is Cerakote the hardware, the lock, the liners, the clips, um, the blade, everything's going to be black. So it's going to be all blacked out with Arctic fat carbon scales. I'm pretty excited to see how that comes out from them. But I got a shark's foot, ironically, from River's Edge Cutlery. Probably could have just ordered this and asked them to do the Cerakote on this one. But um, at least I get to have it um, in its you know normal form for a little bit. I did already commission scales for this because i just don't like the grivery i definitely like the black better than the gray one um that i had from blade show um but i have toxic fat carbon scales and backspacer coming from carbidize so that should be pretty cool uh my biggest gripe and the reason why i didn't go with the shark's foot which you know normally i'm a sheep's foot guy right um you guys know that actually the two knives in my pocket today Lefty Liang Ma Cuff version two, heavily modded, and the CKF Evo 2.0 are both sheep's foot style blades. Check this side out if you'd like. Oh God, did I just, man, I am so reckless. Just smacking shit around. Um, there we go. That's the other side. So obviously I love this blade shape, right? Um, but the reason I didn't get one originally was, well, one, the 8020 originally came with a clip point, and I kind of like that design. And two, this right here. There is an enormous gap between where that blade ends and where that blade ends and where the, uh, let me zoom in and see if we can get a better angle on this. Where the blade ends and where the uh, scale ends. It's just, it's like, what? what is that? I mean, an inch, half an inch of room down there. Um, this handle obviously is made to hold both blade shapes. Um, and that's why it's like that. Because obviously with a shark's foot, you're going to have this taper right down where the clip point comes up. And they needed to obviously have that extra room for the clip point. So it's kind of just a, a byproduct of that. But, you know, it's okay. It's fine. I've gotten used to it. Also, one of my gripes on this knife in general is this, you know, right here kind of has this ass end sticking out. Kind of like the Runt 5. I complained about that. Um, but otherwise, I really like the design. I've got it dialed pretty good on the steel bearings, which I hate. I really want the skips, but they're not available right now. And I've tried posting in the group on Facebook about it. And nobody has really reached out saying they have an extra set for me. Um, so I'll just have to wait. One other thing I noticed, a big difference between the one... I have a numbered one from Blade Show, the Clip Point one. And a big difference between that one and this one, obviously the black scales and the shark's foot blade versus clip point and gray is the shark lock. Right here, the jimping and the corners on this are so much sharper than they are on my uh, other one. I actually took, when I took this apart, I took sandpaper to this and I knocked these edges down. Luckily that all pretty much came off. It's not super sharp anymore. Um, 
So, I mean, it's not a big deal now. You can easily, you know, I can easily deploy and disengage the knife and everything. It doesn't hurt. But when I first got it, it, it was pretty sharp. I've heard people complain about that before. Um, so, anyway, uh, that is the Shark's Foot 8020.5 with the black rivalry I got from River's Edge Cutlery. Um, can't wait to see what they come up with on my clip point. Well, I know what they're going to do, so I just can't see. Can't wait to see how it comes out. And I did loctate this. Oh, did you hear that? That sounded really weird. Um, I did loctate this, so hopefully it stays in place. And it is dead centered. Um, looking good there. So I'm going to put this to the side. And the other knife that I got in this morning that, man, I really, really like this design is... The Brian Brown Knives Raptor. Uh, dead centered. This is the plain titanium version without speed holes and uh, the satin blade. So the one I had originally that I unboxed the other day was speed holes. And it was like a dark titanium or tumbled or something. Had sort of bronzy accents. Still had the satin blade. And, and I, I liked it. Um... It grew on me from the beginning of the unboxing, but the speed holes kind of killed it for me as a lefty because my finger would slide into the bottom speed hole. Uh, my pinky would slide in. And then when you shut the knife, if your pinky's in there, you might chop the tip off. Uh, it's only a lefty problem. But anyway, uh, a good buddy on Instagram, shout out to Brian. Um, I'll put his Instagram below if I remember. I believe it's like, L-I-L-B-S-E-D-C, something like that. Uh, really cool dude. Really appreciate it. He uh, had a three-way deal going where he got a Wear Lucas P, I believe. And um, I sent the Speed Hole Satin one off to that guy who traded him that. And then Brian sent me his plain tie with the Satin. So it worked out really well. Uh, the detent on this one seems to be slightly lighter, I think, than the one with the speed holes, which to me is a good thing as a lefty because I can actually easily reverse flick this. It does take a little bit more because I'm putting a little pressure on that lock bar, um, but in normal use and practice, when I flick it, it comes out really well. Uh, the ergos have grown on me exceptionally uh, well. I mean, I originally did not like this grip back here. But I've found that it is very comfortable, and I can kind of put my thumb up into this poon spoon, and I get excellent control. And then I can choke up to here, and kind of, I just keep my thumb in that spot, and I get even more control. It's just excellent. The action on this one is just as good, if not better, than the one I had. I mean, what more can you ask for? I've been tempted to... Um, take it apart, put skiffs in and everything. But as I mentioned in the unboxing, this is not a captive pivot. It's a free spinning pivot with tooling on one side. It just doesn't seem worth it to risk it because if they Loctited this and when I go to loosen this, if I can't get it loose, what'll happen is it'll slightly loosen. I've had this happen before with knives and it's a nightmare. It'll slightly loosen and then I'll have blade play and shit, but I won't be able to get the knife apart and I won't be able to tighten it again either because I have nothing to keep pressure on this side. Now it could very easily just come right out. Uh, Riot usually doesn't use Loctite, but I don't know the situation uh, on this knife. I'm just gonna see how it breaks in. I have no play of any kind, so I don't really see the need to mess around with it. Um, Lockup is solid. We're looking at what? Um, 30%, 35%, something like that. Drops to your nail. I mean, very light shake. You're always going to kind of have pressure on the lock bar, so it's hard to not sort of, you know, if I take all pressure off the lock bar, it's very droppy. It's not quite drop shut. I put some KPL Heavy on the detent ball, and it's definitely breaking in. Um, you can slow roll this. You can, because of the detent being rather light, I mean, it's not like super light. It's just light. Um, you can just grab the blade like right here because uh, of that and just roll it right out like that. So I've been doing that. I've been doing the reverse flick lefty. 
Um, and then obviously you have the thumb flick. Lefty is excellent. Right-handed, you have a great thumb flick and a great drop. And then you also have the reverse flick lefty. It's an absolute dream. Uh, I love it. I, and I love the look of it. It's just gorgeous. I compared it to my Satori in the unboxing. And again, similar in terms of how thin they are, the curve of the handle sort of, uh, hollow grinds, uh, M390, a lot of similarities here, right? At least I'm pretty sure it's an M390. Hmm. I have to double check that, but I'm 90% sure he would have went with M390. Could be L Max, but I doubt it. Um, just a gorgeous freaking knife. I can't wait for my Jaegers to get here. Um, I've just been picking up a lot of Riot made uh, knives lately, so I'm pretty pretty excited about that. Of course, the Satori has a little more drop in it uh, than this does, but I really am enjoying it. I just took a drive um, like 30 minutes away to a brewery to pick up some beer. I uh, found a new beer that's pretty freaking good. Um, and they had cases at the brewery. It's a local place. So I figured I'd just save some money and go that route. And uh, I was playing with this thing the whole way there and back. And I freaking just enjoyed every moment of it. Um, you can see the titanium has a really nice just finish to it. It's very kind of polished. Uh, sort of unique for Riyadh, I think. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything I've had with this finish before, and I can't. Uh, the transitions in the backspacer are fantastic. It just, it looks excellent. I love the little jimping back here. Um, there's the inside for you. I don't know, is there any markings on the inside? We can take a look. There's no markings on the outside. There's obviously weight relief. I actually saw in another video, I believe it was Mo Bravo's uh, video, that this version is actually lighter than the speed hole version, at least the DLC speed hole version. And that might be because of this weight relief in here. It's all throughout as opposed to just having a few holes. Um, that could make a difference. Look at that gorgeous blue pivot. It was hard to tell in pictures from Brian and other people if the accents were blue. Sometimes they kind of looked like a gray um, accent or sometimes it would seem like the studs were gray and this was blue. Like It's just hard, hard to tell unless you're uh, right here over the camera or in person. And uh, I'm very glad that um, it is blue because that's definitely my preference. This gorgeous hollow grind with that harpoon blade. It's just absolutely sexy. I believe this is based off of his warthog design. And, um, yeah, he did a great job. And, uh, yeah, first impressions are extremely good. Has grown on me so much from, I mean, the moment I saw this knife, uh, in the summer when he did the pre-order, I was immediately like, damn, that's sexy, but thumb studs, thin, right hand only, just not going to work for me lefty, right? And I kind of wish I had pre-ordered one because I would have saved, uh, whatever, you know, I paid 400 for the one I traded. So, you know, I probably would have saved 50 bucks or something like that. No big deal. Now I'm just glad I got one. And this is the exact configuration I wanted. So it's perfect. Um, and a couple other knives coming in that are similar to this. They sort of came out around the same time. The Berg Blades Barber. I have one of those on the way. Um, and then the Lucas P from Wear Knives. I will be getting a loaner in from a local buddy here uh, not too long from now. I didn't want to buy one of those. Uh, I just, I don't know. I'm not sure that's for me. The clip seems really shallow. Um, S35BN for $300 plus. Dollars, and I, I don't know. It just didn't excite me as much as this knife does. Um, so... Anyway, that is the Brian Brown Knives Raptor and the Demco Knives AD20.5. First impressions are very good on both. Can't wait to throw some scales on this. I'm also going to get a custom clip for the Raptor, I think, as long as it uh, sticks around. I'm actually having, I believe his name is Johnny T. I can't remember his last name. On Instagram, uh, I reached out to him. Shout out to whoever told me about that. I'm sorry, I forget. Um, I'm getting a custom clip made for the Satori here so that it's going to be longer. 
so it reaches up to around here. It's also gonna go over to this side so it's not on the frame lock, so you're not putting pressure on the lock bar. And I'm hoping that will let me reverse flick this. I'm also at the same time as that, gonna have him make a very similar clip for the Evo. That one I kinda just want to be the same shape and everything as this. It's just gonna be like a black Timascus or whatever he does. They're, they're gonna match, which is gonna be cool. Um, those are kind of pricey. I think they're like 150 each. So uh, I'm going to get those two made. And then uh, once I get those, assuming I like his work, which it looks like I will, I'll probably send him the Raptor and um, he can make a clip for this that maybe could be a little longer as well. Have that cool time mask. It will make it match the knife better, obviously. Um, and then I could get a better uh, reverse flick on this too. So I'm starting to come up with ideas to kind of make knives work for me better left-handed. Man, I love this thing. I really love this thing. The look is just so sexy. So anyway, uh, I love you guys. I appreciate all of your support, Patreon, memberships. Um, I had somebody reach out to me today. Shout out to Corey. Um, and he was like, man, how do I support you? Um, I love your content. Um, how do I, you know, how do I support you on Patreon or wherever? And uh, he had trouble getting on Patreon or something. So I said, hey, man, I have a memberships thing through YouTube. So there's actually a button down here. You can click join. I think it only works on Android or Apple, one or the other. Um, so some of you might not see it, but uh, you can join there. I have a few different tiers. Uh, you get little emojis and stuff during lives and chats and whatever. Um, you can also do Patreon, of course. Um, I appreciate all of it. I'm going to start doing more for those people uh, in 2022. It's one of my resolutions uh, with the knife company. I'm going to try to incorporate that, give discounts or something, or early access. Um, I may start doing knife sales uh, and do them through Patreon first. If I ever sell a knife, I'll run it through that group first and see if they're interested before just posting it. I'm just really antsy with knife sales. I'm like, oh, I need money. And then I just quickly sell a knife. You know, I just go, all right, I'm going to sell this. I post it on Instagram and it's gone in like five minutes, which is awesome. I love you guys for buying that stuff so fast. So, um, you know, waiting and posting in Patreon, it's just for me, it's like my impatience, you know, but I'm going to try to be better about all that. Anyway, I have rambled enough. Love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. And I will catch you later.